This presentation is entitled Yahuwah's Name, yod Hey vav Hey, in English YHVH, encoded in our DNA. Just for clarification, in my presentation, I am using yod Hey vav Hey, or a set in English, YHVH, Yahuwah or Yahweh, instead of Lord, which is a title and not a name. And I am using Yahusha or Yeshua instead of Jesus, which is not a translation, but a transliteration from a Greek mistransliteration and really has no meaning either in Hebrew nor in English. Yahuwah or Yahweh and Yahusha are the actual original names and the true nature and character of them. Now back to our presentation with the title Yahuwah's Name Yodebafe encoded in our DNA. Here we have the four Hebrew letters, Yod, He, Vav, He. Hebrew is read from the right to the left. In the word Yod, He, Vav, He, we can use the letter W and follow Rome, or the letter U and follow the Greeks, or we can use the V and follow the Hebrew consonant Vav as in Yahweh or in Yahuwah. Some pronounce the name as Yahweh, as uh, I did here, some as Yahweh, some as Yahuwah as I mostly do, and others as Jehovah. A direct link can easily be found between the building blocks of life and the creator of the universe. Mankind is fearfully and wonderfully made with a hidden code within the cell of every life. This code is the alphabet of DNA that spells out the creator's name and man's purpose. Scientists discovered a map of four DNA bases that carry the ability to sustain life. These bases, known as chromosomes, are paired differently for each person. Human DNA contains 23 pairs of chromosomes made up of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, and their acidic counterparts. Encoded within these elements is an amazing blueprint of life that proves the Creator has put his own unique stamp upon every person. This stamp is his name, as revealed to Moses, thousands of years ago. The hidden name of our Creator, yod heh vav -Heh, y -H -V -H, in your DNA. The DNA is composed of four elements, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, when put together form YHVG. Carbon is what makes us physical and earthly beings. When carbon is replaced with nitrogen, we have all colorless, odorless, and invisible gases. They form the letters YHVH, which is the name of the Most High Gods. Elohim, the creator of the universe, the one that made us, the one that sustains us and keeps us going.
DNA is a carrier of specific genetic information that takes the form of a four character digital code. This information is contained in an arrangement of four chemicals that scientists represent with the letters A, C, T, and G. The sequences of these chemicals provide the instructions necessary to assemble complex protein molecules that, in turn, help form structures diverse as eyes, wings, and lakes. The bases adenine guanine, thymine, and cystosine form chemical pairs AT, CG, DNA double helix. These four elements point to Yotevafe when you take the intervals of AT, CG, and convert the interval numbers to letters, it spells the name of our creator, Y, H, V, H, simply amazing. Yahuwah's name is in our DNA, scientist says. So we have the Y, H, V, some write it with W and H. In Exodus chapter 3, the verses 14 and 15, it says, Thus you are to say to the children of Israel, Yotevafe, Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my remembrance to all generations. The Almighty has given us his name as a sign of his existence and an avenue of communication. However, translators have hidden this Hebrew name in English Bibles. In the scriptures, the sacred name of uh, Yotevafe or Yahuwah is used whenever the English words Lord in capital letters or God appear in all capital letters. Yahuwah is used almost 7,000 times throughout the Bible as the only and unique name of the Mighty One of Israel. Isaiah corroborates this. It states in Isaiah 42.7, I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. Jeremiah adds his confirmation in chapter 16, verse 21, they shall know that my name is Yahuwah, O Yotevafi. While Amos 5.8 says, Yahuwah is his name. The book of Zechariah declares, in that day there shall be one Yahuwah, and his name one. The Creator's name is Yahuwah, spelled in four Hebrew letters, Yote Bafe, on English YHVH. Now compare this four lettered name to the four elements that make up human DNA and discover an ancient secret of creation.
The key to translating the code of DNA into a meaningful language is to apply the discovery that converts elements to letters based upon their matching values of atomic mass. Hydrogen becomes the Hebrew letter Yod, or the English Y. Nitrogen becomes the letter He, the English H. Oxygen becomes the letter Vav, V, or some people write it with W. And carbon becomes Gimel, the letter G. These substitutions now reveal that the ancient form of Yahweh's name, Yodhevafe, exists as a literal chemistry of our genetic code. Through this bridge between Yahuwah's name and the elements of modern science, it now becomes possible to reveal the full mystery and find even greater meaning in the ancient code that lives as each cell of our bodies. When we substitute modern elements for all four letters of YHVH's ancient name, we see a result that, at first blush, may be unexpected. Replacing the final H in Yotebafe with its chemical equivalent of nitrogen. Yahuwah's name becomes the elements hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. H, N, O, N, all colorless, odorless, and invisible gases. In other words, replacing 100% of Yahuwah's personal name with the elements of this world creates a substance that is an intangible yet very real form of creation. This is not to suggest that Yahuwah is simply a wispy gas made of invisible elements. Rather, it's through the very name that Yahuwah divulged to Moses over three millennia ago that our world and the foundation of life itself became possible. Yahuwah tells us that in the form of hydrogen, the single most abundant element of the universe, he is a part of all that has ever been, is, and will be. Indeed, in the earliest descriptions of Yahuwah, we are told that he is omnipresent and takes on a form in our world that cannot be seen with our eyes. Thus, he can be known only through his manifestations. This non-physical form of Yahuwah's presence as the breath of Yahuwah, ten sephirot of nothingness, one is the breath of the living Yahuwah, life of worlds. This is a holy breath. Now I have the question, what are the sephirot? And some people may also not know. But I looked it up and it says, according to the Kabbalists, these are the attributes of God and relate to each other in a scripted way. The one letter that sets us apart from Yahuwah is also the element that makes us real in our world, carbon. So both the secret letter codes of antiquity and the literal translation of DNA as an alphabet, we are shown that something about our existence remains lasting and eternal. We share that never-ending quality with our Creator through a full 75% of the elements that define our genetic code, 
wrote Greg Braden in his book, The God Code. There's a scientific proof showing us that Yahuwah has written his own name upon every human being. Sefer Yetzirah, the book of creation says, within the letters is a great concealed mystical exalted secret from which everything was created. His name is within us, encoded into the basic selves of humanity. Every person, regardless of race, religion, sex or status, has a divine imprint inside their body. Yahuwah's name is in every person. There is one Yahuwah and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all, says Ephesians 4.5. The potential of becoming like Yahuwah is in every person. Genesis recounts that we have been made in His image. In the beginning, the Creator breathed upon men and He became a living being. It is this deposit from the heavens the gift of a soul that separates us from other species. Inside of each person is the breath of the Creator, known as a soul. In Hebrew, this is called the Neshama. The Neshama is a divine spark of Yahuwah found within mankind. The scriptures translate Neshama as breath, spirit, and inspiration. Each cell of our body, containing the divine name, groans to be reunited with Yahuwah, but it cannot. Why not? Because of fleshly desires that result in sin. Sin stops the earth's suit of the body from fully returning to its starting place with Yahuwah. The fleshly nature leads us to rebel against the Almighty's will and His ways. Our soul cannot cleave to Yahuwah because of our fleshly nature and ego. The desire to receive for self alone blocks the light of our neshama. Our selfish actions are like a huge dark cloth covering the light of the Creator. Darkness grows, but the light remains. Though man is rebelling against his creator, why? Because he is led by Satan, who was the first one that rebelled. So here is a question, what's the opposite of rebelling? It is to be obedient, give in, obey, surrender, comply, yield, complacent, compliant, loyalist, adherent. Remember, we are created, and our Heavenly Father is the one that created us, and uh, He has a right to lay down the rules, which He did by giving the Torah, the instruction to Moses, for all Israel and for everyone living. Try viewing mankind as an ember from the burning bush. The human body is a container of a divine spark from Yahuwah. Left alone, this spark will diminish and burn low through seeking pleasure in worldly desires. The false fulfillment of momentary happiness is a darkness that seeks to put out our fire. Each action of the flesh places another layer of darkness upon the light.
These layers of darkness are called Sin or Chet in Hebrew. Chet is an ancient word that literally means to miss the mark, lose focus, stray, miss the goal, or pass off right and duty, to incur guilt, incur penalty by sin, forfeit. In Isaiah 59.2 from the Jubilee Bible, it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohim, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Chet is the distance we place between our Neshama and our Creator as we miss the mark of the Scriptures. The center of Yahuwah's birth eye is clearly explained within the pages of the first five books of the Bible. These teachings are often referred to as the Torah or law, but it should be a better translation by using instructions. The Torah is Yahuwah's will for mankind and blueprint for living, and I mean for all people. There is no exception. The Torah is holy and the commandments holy and just and good, says Romans 7.12. When we follow Torah, meaning his instructions, his guidelines, we do not sin. To obey the precept of Torah is to stay on the straight and narrow road of redemption. A person sins when the Torah is violated or forgotten. The book of 1 John clarifies this. 1 John 3, 4 Everyone who sins practices Torahlessness because sin, chet, is Torahlessness. The problem is that we can't follow Torah enough. The obedience of today doesn't erase the disobedience of yesterday. Though we obey the Torah, the layers of darkness remain within our soul. This is because Torah does not redeem. Torah describes how the redeemed believer is to live and relate to Yahuwah. Mankind is redeemed only through Yahuwah's code. The soul code of DNA links man to Yahuwah, but this doesn't equate mankind to Yahuwah. We aren't God. The DNA code shows only our potential to be like Yahuwah in our intentions and purpose. We can't achieve his state of greatness just as a flashlight will not work without batteries. Our sincere efforts to correct the soul are useless. Good works cannot dispel total darkness. Whoever keeps the whole Torah and yet stumbles at one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Prayer, obedience and faith brings us closer to Yahuwah, but without the love of Messiah, we are still in the dark. Messiah is the floodlight that lights up our life. Mashiach's love is a bridge that joins our Neshama to our Creator. The Savior is a light that saves us from eternal darkness and suffering. To handle the issue of sin, we must realize that stars are only seen at night. Under the deep darkness of sin is the light of the soul.
hidden in the DNA of every man, woman, and child is the Yotevafe code. To experience a life at its fullest, all one must do is look inside and see the sacred name. Yahuwah is a path to purpose and way to life eternal. Yahuwah is our only hope. We need Yahuwah's salvation to deliver us from evil. Let's decipher this code and understand man's redemption. Anyone who calls upon the name of Yahuwah will be saved, according to Joel 2.32. But how can we call upon the name of Yahuwah if we don't know his name? That's why it's absolutely important and a salvation issue to find out from Scripture what the name of our Heavenly Father is so we can call upon his name. This verse is quoted twice in the New Testament, in which both cases the Messiah is seen as fulfillment of this prophecy. The Yahuwah code is manifest in his Son. His Son is a path of deliverance. Calling upon his name allows the believer to take hold of the Almighty's power for deliverance. Appropriately, the true name of Messiah demonstrates how this works. In Matthew 121 it says, And you shall call him Yahusha, for he will save his people from their sins. The Hebrew speaking king of the Jews was given a Hebrew name. He wasn't named Jesus, but Yahusha. In the Gospels, the Messiah said that he came in his father's name, the name of Yahuwah. How is Yahuwah Yahshua's name? The name Yahusha is a compound word made up of two Hebrew phrases. First, Yah is a shortened version of the name of Yahuwah. Now here we have an example because the Hebrew Messiah said in John 5.43, I, Yahusha, or Yahushua, am come in my Father's name, and the Father's name is Yahuwah, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, like Jesus, him ye will receive. So we see that the Y-A-H is included in the son's name. The name Yah is a poetic form of Yahuwah found throughout the Psalms. The King James Version says, sing praises to his name. Extol him that rides upon the heavens by his name, Yah, Y-A-H, and rejoice before him. Secondly, Shua is a Hebrew word meaning to deliver, to turn, to save, or salvation. When these two words are put together, the Savior's true name is revealed. Yahusha as it is written, no one can come to the Father except by having faith in his only begotten Son, Yahusha, whose name means the one that exists, saves. So we have the three letters, Y-A-H plus Shua, Yahuwah is salvation. So we say Yahshua, or Yahusha. Yahuwah offers his salvation, his deliverance through the person of Yahusha or Yahushua. 
Yahusha, Yahushua, bridges the gap between Yahuwah and our souls. Mankind was made in the image of Yahuwah. We have his name written upon our very DNA. Scientists have proof that his name is stamped upon every soul. However, because of chet, because of sin, layers of separation distance our soul from our Creator. It says in Romans 3.23, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of Yahuwah. Our stubborn will or self-will causes us to go an independent way. However, because of loving kindness, Yahuwah has sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes upon him would not perish, but have everlasting life. We can connect our Neshama to Yahuwah through his Son, Yahusha or Yahushua. The Savior is the only path to deliverance and salvation from the sinful self. The layers of sin that cloak our Neshama can only be removed through his sacrifice. In John 1, verse 12, it says, As many as received him, to them he gave the right or the power to become the children of Yahuwah, even to those who believe in his name. The DNA within our bodies points to our Creator and the salvation that he has provided. The Yahuwah code, Yotevafe, within each person is his son Yahshua, many say Yahusha. Shalom. This presentation originated from Lifeline to Yahusha Ministries. It was put into a PowerPoint presentation recorded by myself. You can reach me at Malachi 4.4 at Reagan.com or go to my website, thefictorygeneration.net. If you want to get in contact with Lifeline to Yahusha Ministry, you can contact them at this information, which is in South Africa. And if you agree with this message, please give us a thumb up.